Hello everybody! I know it's technically March, but it's time to finally do an update video for the month of February. February has really been a wild time. Wild time for many reasons. Tonight we're gonna have a new moon. I'm going to light my divination candles and we're going to manifest good energy because bad vibes are really trying to try me in February. But let's just talk about what went down. Start of the month, I started a Great. Took a nice three hour road trip by myself to go see Eric Nam in concert because I love that man. I love that man. Um, and he was so great. The line outside of the venue was so long though. I was like, oh, I got there like 30 minutes after doors opened before the concert started and I was like, okay, so in 30 minutes this line should be short and I could just walk right in because I did not need to like fight my way to the front because I'm tall and I don't care like that. Um, but I get there like three minutes before the show's supposed to start and the line is still around the block and I'm like, okay, great. So by the time I get in, Lynn Lapid, who is the opener, her set is basically over and I'm like, okay, well that, that's great, isn't it? And I'm in the back, like I said I would be, and usually it's fine, but there was this, and you know, it was Lunar New Year and the start of Black History Month. So truly this entire day was supposed to be about me, but there was this white woman standing in front of me, who was about my height, maybe a little bit taller, who was filming the entire concert on her phone the whole time. Never stopped once. She would stop the recording in between songs, but then just started right back up. And worst part about it was that she was holding her phone over her head. So she was over six feet tall, holding her phone over her head for the entire concert, standing right in front of me. And I did not choose violence. Every time that my instincts are like, you should choose violence, you should go up behind that woman and just choke her out. I choose not to. I choose not violence and I think I should be rewarded and praised for that. Um, but that really, really, really did piss me off. But despite that, Eric Nam's concert was so good. He's an amazing performer. His songs are really fun live. Um, he's super funny. But also, he has backup dancers. The backup dancers are really the highlight for the show for me. One, because they were both mm, gorgeous looking men. Um, and they were also just so fun and talented and lively. And I just, I love a good backup dancer. I love a good dancey dance moment. Um, and it was just so fun to see. And I was like, okay, I know that I did drive all the way here because it was my day off. And I didn't have to want to, and I, he did have a concert the next day in my city. And I was like, I didn't want to have to like see him in my city because then I would have to take a day off and it didn't seem like it was worth all that because it was already on a day off and it wasn't that far away and I was like I could just drive and it'll save me a lot of like stress but because I had missed the opener and because his concert was so good I was like I think I'm gonna call out of work and I'm gonna see him again um and I had a bunch of friends who were going to see him that night so it just made sense that I was like no I will definitely be seeing Eric Nama again um, cause he was just so good and fun to see live, like, zero regrets whatsoever, he was amazing and I had a great time. This is the merch that I got from the Eric Dom concert. They are gray sweatpants, they are so cute. A little bit shorter than I would like them, but you know, not everything could be about me. It says there and back again on the pants, but also, it has a back pocket. It has a back pocket along with two side pockets. I love these pants. Now I don't remember if the, if this was like during when I went down to go see Eric Nam or if it was the week before when I went down to go see I don't know how but they found me. But I think it was the second time. But like when I was trying to like drive back to like get on the freeway to like head home, there was like this guy who pulled up like next to me at the stoplight and he was like honking his horn at me and like I don't want to assume bad intentions. I was like okay well maybe there's something wrong with my car and he needs to tell me maybe there's something wrong. I rolled in my window and I'm like what? And he's like hey, how you doing? And I said, good. And I rolled up the window and I sped off. And then he kept trying to follow me and kept trying to like honk his horn and try to talk to me. And I'm like, sir, it is 1 a.m. I am trying to drive three hours to go back home. Um, also, you're a man, ew. What are you doing? You, This is not going to work out in your favor at all. Men, disgusting. Also during, I think, yeah, this was the second time when I was waiting, when I was waiting in line to get into the venue, there was this man who came up to me because I was standing in line. I don't know why it was me that he approached. Like, sometimes I get it when I'm like wearing a really cute outfit. I was very, I was just very casually for this Eric Nam concert. But this man, he comes up to me while I'm in line and he's like, hey, how are you doing? And I said, good. I do not give men any sort of time of day. I do not give them a smile, a look, a conversation or anything. I make it very clear that I do not want to be spoken to. And, he, and then the man's like, Oh, okay. And he gets very uncomfortable and runs away. And I'm like, yeah, as you should, don't talk to me. 
But other than those two incidences, I had a great time. Um, it was fun going on like a nice little drive. Um, the gas, my gas, my car does not have good gas mileage. It has, I think like 17 miles per gallon in the city and like 25 on the highway. And because my car is a Mercedes, I love Kenzie, I love her so much. Um, she needs premium gas. So it's so expensive to just drive down, just do a quick three hour drive there and back. Um, so the likelihood that I will do it again is low. Um, it really depends on how like my work shakes out. Cause in theory I could just take a day off. But also like, I don't have all that kind of time off because let's just get into BTS right now. Because BTS, oh God, y'all, y'all. Oh my God, I can't even get, so much has happened with BTS, okay. BTS are going to perform four shows in Vegas next month. Next month, they will be performing in Vegas at the Allegiant Stadium. Now, it's not like SoFi, where it's like, oh, just a couple days off in the middle between these two shows, like a Thursday, Friday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, or whatever it was. No, it is two separate weekends on two different weeks. Um, and spoiler alert, I don't live in Vegas so I might have to take those full two weeks off to go see them. I don't want to have to, but flight prices are just not, they're just not it right now. They're just not it right now. But that's all dependent on me getting tickets because we're actually gonna insert the clip right here. I'm filming this now because I know I will not want to talk about it outside of this moment, but they did not get the army membership pre-sale for their tickets in Vegas. And it's because I did not know I had to sign up for the pre-sale through Weverse alongside Ticketmaster because once you sign up for it on Ticketmaster it doesn't say to make sure it didn't I read through all the things and it just I didn't read it or whatever I don't really care I'm very upset so likelihood of me getting these tickets is very low because they most likely will all sell out and that's quite upsetting and I know I'm sure I don't want to have to talk about this outside of this day because obviously like knock on wood we we like the pot there is like a non zero chance that I could get it through the verified fan but like the likelihood is so low that I'm really just like I'm not you know holding my breath it is what it is I can't do anything about it now um but I am like genuinely very upset about this and I don't want to have to talk about it again so we're talking about it now in the moment so that when I film this video tomorrow morning I don't have to mention it again I'm not that upset about it anymore it's been like a whole night and like I'll talk about the concert that I went to last night that was really good and like why my mood has fully changed and shifted but like honestly I have to stay positive I'm going to light my divination candles and we're going to manifest getting these tickets but the f I didn't know <sighs> I feel so dumb and it's so upsetting. I have not been to therapy yet. I'm filming this before my therapy appointment and I feel like maybe I could talk through it in therapy, but I'm just truly, I keep beating myself up over it because I'm like, how can you be that stupid? You had, I had to confirm my army membership on Ticketmaster and on Weavers and it said it in the confirmation email to make sure that you confirm it on Weavers and I just did it. And I just didn't read it and I, I just did it. And like, if I was just like a little bit more conscious and careful about it, I would have probably gotten the army pre-sale. I probably would have gotten the tickets that I wanted. But like now, the likelihood that they will all sell out in the army pre-sale is so high. And it is so upsetting to me that I might miss out on getting to see them because of my oversight. It makes me so upset. But I'm going to just, knock on wood, manifest it. The tickets will not all sell out today, and I will get good tickets to see them when the pre-sale happens tomorrow. But also, we are only like three months out from their concert dates at SoFi. I have not financially recovered from that trip as I've been like re as I've been rebalancing my budget and like looking over how much I've been spending to see like where I can spend less money so I can afford this trip. I have been in the red every single month since that trip. Um because I just think I have more money than I do and I really I really don't. I need to stop spending money. Um, but it's so hard when BTS keeps dropping merch. Like, I don't remember if they're, like, I think their, like, self-made merch was all in January, but, like, I spent so much money on that. And they're dropping more Permission to Dance concert merch tonight. 
and you know I have to buy it. I cannot trust that I can go and wait in line and that they'll have the merch that I want. I was burned once by Sofa. I will not make the same mistake again because they have it. They've restocked all of the merch. They're adding new ones for their concert in Seoul, which is honestly amazing because I love um, the like the deco bands for the for the army bombs. I love the hoodie. I love the blanket, but they've restocked or they're going to restock the original blue and orange blanket and the beret that I have been wanting for months. Um, I missed it when it first dropped before the concerts in November. And so like, I, if I don't get it, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna really fucking hurt because I want it so bad. But honestly, do I have the money? Do I have the money for this? Not necessarily, but I'm gonna make it work. I think I'm just gonna have to liquidate some of my assets. Um, I have, uh, just like a lot of cash that I need to just put into my bank account. A lot of things that I need to just like move out of my house and sell because I just have too many things that I don't really need. I just keep buying things. That's why I keep forgetting. It's like I look down, I look downstairs because I haven't fully moved up into like my, my bedroom yet because my house is still under construction. Surprise, surprise, surprise. So I left a lot of my stuff downstairs and I just have like boxes and boxes. I have boxes and boxes here of just stuff that I bought that I like haven't opened. Um, so I need to just stop buying things because I have a lot of things that I haven't even opened and I'm just spending money to like have boxes of things and that's just a little silly, isn't it? But BTS is going to be performing here again. I'm so excited. Um, I love them so much. They've just, so much has happened this month. Like we got, like we got the, the concert announcement, but they're also doing like their soul, um, like their three soul concerts um in like a week in like a week i need to ask for that day off fuck fuck i need to request that day off fuck i forgot okay i'll do that later and i spent so much money on that because okay let me let me break it down for y'all who are not in the know bts they're doing three concerts in seoul march 10th 12th and 13th 10 and 13 you could only live stream watch in your own home so you have to buy live stream tickets for that they had multiple tiers of tickets you could have either bought a two-day pass that had um, only an HD multicam. And I don't use the multicam because the, the, tr the delay between switching from one camera to another is just not worth it for me. And like, I don't know who I'm supposed to look at as an OT7. I just go with the main camera and I just like, I watch what they show me. Um, or you could have done like single day tickets, like bought one for the 10th and one for the 13th. And that one, the highest tier one had the 4k single view and, and also on top of that, the HD multi view. And like, it was slightly cheaper, like $30 cheaper to just get the two day pass with the HD multi cam. But like the 4k versus HD is like such a striking difference, especially when the quality is already so low because it's a live stream that I felt that I had to spend the 30 extra dollars to buy the 4k single view plus the HD multicam for the 10th and the 13th separately because they didn't have the 4k single view option in the two day pass. And I could have saved $30 there, but it didn't make any sense to do so. It didn't make any sense to do so. I needed to have the 4k and that's gonna be fun. The concert is as per usual at like 1 or 2 a.m. Um, because that's just how the way time zones work and I, I hate it, but I will do it for them. I will stay up both of those days until 1 a.m. to see it. But like I said, there's three concerts, there's one on the 12th. For the 12th, they're doing um, like a movie theater live viewing, which is gonna be super cool. I don't love how we can't watch it live um, in America. I think that's a little bit weird. That's a little bit rude um, because they have like partnered with different movie theaters like around the world and they're going to be like showing a playback and a delayed viewing of their March 12th concert in theaters. So like you could like go buy a movie ticket and like go watch the concert with like a bunch of other army. And if you go to the one in Cinemark like I am, you get to bring your army bombs and it's gonna be such a good, cool, fun time. But the because of like time zones and stuff like that, uh, because they don't wanna have to have movie theaters open at 1 a.m., which I think is a little bit lame. Um, they only have show times at 1.30 and 5.30 like local time and they're gonna be delayed viewing. So like uh, all the people in like a normal time zone, like, like in Asia are able to just like watch the concert like actually live, but we're not allowed to watch it live because there's also no like live stream ticket 
for the 12th like there is for the 10th and the 13th so you have to go to see it delayed in theaters if you want to see that concert and of course I'm going to go and of course I'm going to go to the 130 and the 530 show because of course it's BTS I don't care if the 130 and the 530 are literally the exact same thing you will see different things because that's the delayed viewing. Once you watch it for the first time and you experience it, you know it's gonna happen, then you could like actually watch and like pay attention and have fun. You know, you get it. These are the things that I have to worry about when it comes to BTS. Uh, I love them though. Um, I have decided though that when I go to see them in Vegas, because I am manifesting, it's going to happen. I, I'm very tempted to get all new outfits because I already, I had four perfect outfits that I planned for the show in SoFi. It would be great for my bank account if I just wore those same outfits. But it would be so boring if I wore those same outfits. But do I have the money to go and get new outfits? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't think so. And I think it would just be smart if I just wore those same outfits. But, like, maybe I could find something different in my closet. I have more merch. I have different options that I could wear, but I just... That's just another thing that we have to worry about. Do I need to get more outfits do i need to redo my four looks for bts do i have to come up with four more looks because i don't know if i have the money to do that honestly but i love them and we'll see what we can do you know regardless i love bts and i will be there i will be there i will get tickets at the Allegiant stadium and i will see them live we're manifesting it because it doesn't make any sense to get a live play ticket because they're doing the live play thing that they did at sofi but if you got the army membership pre-sale which i did not you could get discount tickets to go see them at the live play. And like, in theory, I want to, but like the sound check is not interesting. <laughs> I've, I have watched the sound check twice at the live play. It's just them doing like three songs that they will later do in concert. There are no subtitles, there's no translators. It's just sort of them doing their sound check. It's not like fun to watch. I guess if you were there physically in the stadium and like seeing them there, that would be fun, but like, the live play sound check is not fun. Like the only thing that you got with the sound check that was like cool with the live play was like the like the little swag bag. But like I mentioned in my BTS video, the I saw a BTS live video, a lot of the things were missing from the bag. So like, I, and it wasn't really that nice. Like it's not worth it. It's not worth it. But also I made a new army friend. I made two army friends, honestly. We're gonna get to my second army friend later, but one of my army friends, her and her friends are going to um, like road trip down to Las Vegas to go see them on their second weekend. She's like, do you wanna go? I'm like, yes, absolutely. But also because I've gotten my mother into BTS, my mother is now also almost army. She wants to go the second weekend when she's off. And if I go with her, then she gets to pay, she pays for everything. So as much as I want to go with my friends, uh, we gotta think smarter. Uh, less money to spend, more money to spend on merch. Gotta think smarter that way, you know? But by the time that this video goes out, I will not know if I have BTS tickets or not. And that's kind of stressful. So I hope if you're watching this right when it drops that you're manifesting that I can get these tickets um, because I'm going to get them. I am going to see BTS live again. And you might be thinking, Sam, you literally just saw them and it's like the exact same set list. It's literally the exact same tour. It's just a different style. Why, why are you spending your money? Because BTS, first of all, BTS has first dibs on, on my money. That's just how it works. Um, I love BTS and I will do anything to see them again. I don't care if it's if they just literally sit on stage and they sing dynamite over and over and over again. I will be there because I love them. But also, I don't know when the next time I will see them is because they're literally at the age at which Jin, for all intents and purposes, should have been in the military. And like the idea that like they might not be able to postpone it and like they might just have to actually end up going to the military and like I don't even know what will happen then. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. But I don't ever want to have to say, oh, I miss seeing BTS. That would, that would break my heart. That would truly break my heart. Because there's also no live viewing announcement for the concert dates in, in Vegas. I think there is for like the last day, just like they did with SoFi. But like the first three days are also very important. The second day of SoFi had Megan the Stallion. Like... I'm just, I'm just like, ugh, okay, I just, I need to see them. It doesn't, like, what else am I gonna spend my money on? Truly nothing, like, I feel like I have, like, no money. 
but then I'm also like, well, what else would I spend it on if not BTS? But BTS keeps liking, keeps wanting to drop new things. They keep wanting to do merch drops and they keep wanting to give me, to give them my money. And I'm like, I only have so much money, bestie. I have to like pay for food and for gas. But that's all with BTS, I think. I think that's all, those are all the BTS things. Let's just get the housekeeping out of the way. My work has been interesting. It's been just, you know, my my work has been my work. I might have to be taking a lot of time off for these concerts. I actually don't know yet. Um, so I am worried. I'm also like looking into other jobs in the area because I know that like I am getting paid like a decent amount of money to do no work, but I know that I could be getting paid a lot more if I just did more work. So I'm like, I don't, you don't know until you get to the job how much work is really gonna be, you know? So I'm like considering if I should get a new job and there's like all these rumors that like my location's going to be shut down at the end of the year. And I'm like, well, if that happens, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't care enough about this job to move to a new location. I will just find a new job. I don't know. Cause I feel like I worry a lot about making sure that my bosses like me. And I feel like that's not a thing I need to be worried about, you know? Like I'm like, oh, I don't want to take time off because if I take all this time off then they might be like upset that I didn't give up enough notice blah 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 but like as long as I'm doing my job and they don't fire me and I'm within the parameters um then I don't need to care whether or not they like me because I do my job I'm not there to be liked you know it's that RuPaul's best friend race but it's just a thing that I worry about I will bring it up in therapy in a couple hours but um no updates on school are we surprised um, spring quarter's coming up though, and spring quarter is supposed to start literally when, um, these, when the concerts are happening. Um, so Loki hoping that we don't get in spring quarter so that I can just easily go to these concerts, but even then I'm like, I will do what I can. I, BTS comes first. I know Namjoon's like, go study, go care about school. But BTS comes first. They wrote a whole song about it. Pipe Piper, oh my god, no. I know I just finished talking about BTS, but like, what if we get louder than moms? What if we finally get Pipe Piper? Because I mentioned that in my last video, how they teased us by making me think that we were gonna get Pipe Piper. They never perform Pipe Piper. But what if they perform it in Vegas? What if we get Pipe Piper? If I get to see Pipe Piper. And also they're back with, oh my god, no, they're back with all the Did you see Yoongi's V Live a couple days ago? His hair is so long and beautiful, and whoever the fuck in the comments is telling him to cut his hair better shut the fuck up, because his hair is a perfect length, and it's dark. They all have dark hair right now. You know, you know I love a brunette hair era. You know I love when they all have dark hair. The last time that this happened was 2018. That was a perfect time. I love when they all have dark hair, and I love when they all have long hair. I want a long, dark hair era, and we are getting there, and if they cut Yugi's hair before the concert, I'm going to lose it. Anyways, school, no updates. I went to go see twice this month. I made a whole video on that, so I'm not going to like rehash any of that. Um, I will mention though that what I didn't mention in that video because it seems like people who like click on those videos are people who really love twice. I don't want to like ruffle any feathers, but like as much as I had a great time at the concert, they are not lively performers in comparison to like BTS. You know, like they were good, but I feel like BTS had just like so much energy and like stage presence and like their, their like speeches in between, they really showed a lot of personality. It was really fun to sort of like see them like talking to a crowd and get like sort of their vibe. But when they're performing the songs, it doesn't seem like anyone's really like going for it, having a good time, you know, like they're singing to just sort of get the words out, not because like they really like are connecting to it and really just sort of like singing from the heart. They're just sort of like singing to sing. And it felt the same with the dancing. So it was just sort of like, it didn't feel like there was a lot of feeling in their performance, if that makes any sense. Um, regardless, I had a great time and I think that they're very talented. Both things can be true. Um, but last night I went to go see Epic High um, and they were, they were incredible. I had not gone into Epic High the way that I should have because usually before I go see a, a group or something I'll go like listen to like their latest album uh, and get a vibe for the music or like check out the set list but I wanted to go into this concert completely blind because I like to do that sometimes. I'm like I need to either know everything or know nothing. 
and I was like, I just won't, I won't check out any of their music. I just know that they're good. Um, because, yes, because of BTS, technically. Because, you know, Namjoon does the whole Epic High name drop um, in one of their songs. And I was like, oh, Epic High is coming here and it's on my day off. Um, so I'll go see them. I'll go see them. Also, supporting Asian artists. I will always do that. Um, and they were incredible. They were so good live. Their music was so fun. Um, I loved seeing them. And I had a great time at that concert and I almost didn't go because yesterday I was not having a good day, y'all. I was not having a good day. Um, when I got that email from Ticketmaster saying that I was not approved for the ARMY membership pre-sale, I was very, very upset because on top of that, I just built, can you see it? Right there. I just built a table. I love that table so much. I am, I have been dreaming about having that table and I just built it. Um, and I, and I built it in the middle of the night. So I had slid it across my floor because I built it in the hallway because that's the only place where I had enough room to build, to build this table. I slid it back into my room and I sat it down. I was like, oh, it's beautiful. I did not realize until I woke up the next morning, I looked at it, that because I had, I, I had slid it on like the top side of the table because they make you build it upside down. Um, I thought the floor was fine. I thought it was going to be smooth. I slid it across the floor on like the top side of the table that when I, when I saw it in the morning, um, I completely scratched the table just sliding across the floor completely fucked it up um that was really upsetting to wake up to and then on top of that getting that email that I did not get approved for the army membership pre-sale was also very upsetting um and I was just not generally having a good day yesterday so much so that I was like I just I don't even want to go to this concert I just want to stay home and I just want to like be upset and sad in my room but I didn't I left my house I went to go to the concert and I was like I'm gonna have a good time um, and I did, I had a great time and I went by myself as I go to most things, but there was a very cool person who was also by herself who stood next to me because we were just sort of like by the wall away from the big crowd of people because as much as like I love being in the midst of the pit, we are in a pandemic and I like to stay as far away from people as possible. Um, but she struck up a conversation with me. Uh, we found out that we have a lot of the same interests. We are big K-pop fans. I got her Instagram. We are now good friends. That was so fun. I love making friends. And now I just remembered that on top of seeing Epic High, I also just saw Mayday Parade. We need to talk about that. Um, Mayday Parade, um, oh my god, that was a whole weekend that I need to mention. So much has happened in February, I guess. It just feels like the month went by so fast. Um, like last week or so, like on... Saturday? Was it this last Saturday? A couple days ago? I don't know. This last weekend, um, I was going to go see Mayday Parade because they were coming here on their self-titled, like, anniversary tour. And their self-titled album, their third album, is probably my favorite album of theirs. I really, really liked Lesson in Romantics when it first came out, um, or when I first got into it. That was my favorite album for a while. And for some reason, I missed their Lesson in Romantics, um, anniversary tour, and that really upset me. But, um, I knew that they were going on another one for this third album and I absolutely love this album. So I was like, okay, have to go, have to see it. But prefacing that, in the morning time of that day, I was hanging out with my friend uh, because she was going apartment hunting and uh, we were supposed to go check out a bunch of apartments but then like the realtor called us and was like, actually those places are not available uh, so we couldn't go tour any apartments, which was sad. But then we were like, okay, well, we'll go up to... Uh, the north end where my concert is going to be and just go like grab food and hang out there and as we were driving past like the major like college in the area there was like a lot of traffic and she and my friend was like uh there's probably like a game going on yeah and I said I don't know maybe and I looked it up and it was what my mother calls the apple cup I think it means when they're both schools from the same state going against each other so it was sort of like a big deal what was going on and it was like two o'clock the game was at three we didn't really have anything to do so we were like um well do you want to go see the game we were like well how much are tickets tickets were like pretty cheap if you sat in the back because we did not care to sit anywhere in the front and we got in for like 18 dollars. parking was pretty cheap it was only like 12 dollars for parking which compared to the forum's 50 dollar parking was pretty reasonable um and we sat and we watched a college basketball game i didn't love it but I'm not a sports person, you know? Like, put Min Yoon Gi on the court, I will be there. Um, but the sport itself is just so weird. It's such a start and stop game because you, you know, they're playing the game, they're shooting the ball. And then somebody wants to call a timeout. 
and then they're, sh they're playing the game, they're shooting the ball, and then it's another timeout. And then they keep calling timeout, and I'm like, just fucking play the game. Just fucking play the game. I hated all that starting and stopping. And what was even more annoying is that they would do all the starting and stopping, and then I would get on my phone, because I'm bored, because nothing's happening in the game, and then they would, like, do something, and then everybody would be cheering, and I completely missed what happened. That was not fun. I did not love that. I think it's fun to be in a room with people, like, cheering, but it just felt really sad because, like, there was obviously the home team was what everybody was rooting for, and they were like, go team. But then, like, when the other team was also there trying to, you know, like, do a free throw or something, everybody would boo them. And, like, I get it. It's, like, a rivalry or whatever, but, like, I wasn't rooting for one team in particular because, again, I do not care about basketball. But it just felt so mean. Like, imagine coming all the way out to, like, play your favorite sport that you're investing all this time and energy into, and then people just, like, boo you. That's so mean. <laughs> I didn't love that. It, it felt really bad to see. And then also, on top of that, there was, like, this one section of the arena in which all of, like, the, the college kids were sitting in to, like, support the team. They were all very packed into like one section. They were cheering and they knew exactly what to do during all of the parts and blah, 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 blah. And throughout the show, not throughout the show, throughout the game, it's not a show. Uh, throughout the game, like at the like quarter breaks, they would just like give them free stuff. Like during one part of the game, someone in the catwalk starts dropping down Starbucks gift cards to them. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why only them? I get why only them, but still, it felt a little bit classist. They also got free McDonald's swag bags. What the fuck? How come we didn't get anything? Because we didn't pay for the expensive seats? Yeah, it feels a little classist. And the cheerleaders were also boring. In my mind, a cheerleader is supposed to be fun and supposed to do a fun halftime little routine. There was no fun halftime routine from the teenagers. They were just dogs. They were dogs running like a relay race, and that was cute, but like, what were the cheerleaders for then? If not to cheer during a halftime show. I was really expecting that. Maybe that isn't a commonplace in basketball games. I don't know, I don't watch them. The band was very good though. The band was fun and they were very, um, like, talented and they sounded good. But we watched the game. We didn't watch the full game because we had to go to dinner and I had to get to this concert. Um, we went to go try and find food at the nearby, like, shopping area. It was pouring rain, as it does here. And uh, the place we wanted to go was completely filled, and we couldn't get a table for, like, 30, 45 minutes, and we just, we did not have the time for that. So we went to go uh, a little bit farther into the city into to go to, like, this, like, smaller dumpling place because my friend really wanted dumplings um and we got dumplings there and they were not good it was very much like a gentrified sort of feel to the restaurant like it was clearly a chinese restaurant that was not run by chinese people because tell me why i order tea because i always order tea when i get food um because tea is a staple of the meal um i always love hot tea i order jasmine tea they gave me this giant pitcher of water with one tea bag in it there was no flavor in that water. It was so upsetting. Like, why would... That's, first of all, a bag of tea. Real Chinese places serve you loose leaf tea. They just throw the tea in the pot. But also one bag for, like, a liter of water? I actually don't know if it was a liter. I don't know how much a liter is. Um, like this? This is 40... This is 40 ounces. It was bigger than this. So... Why, in what world would there be any flavor? And Jasmine's already a very light tea. There's no fl That was already very upsetting. And then I ordered mushroom and bok choy dumplings because I thought it'd be good. I was like, oh, bok choy and mushrooms, healthy. They tasted very bad. They tasted really weird. There was no seasoning in it. I think they tried to flavor it with wasabi and I'm like, that's, no, no. They were, it was just not good. And I did not have um, a good time eating that. But I went to the Mayday Parade concert. I had a wonderful time. The white people there were very much testing my patience though. As they do everywhere all the time. But in this one specifically. Because I get into the concert. I go and I stand in the pit. I'm standing pretty deep inside of it. Because all the people. It's either 
and there was like the main people crowding around the stage and then there was like a, a really thick wall around like the back side and there's just sort of the middle section that's empty and I'm like okay well then I guess I'll stand in the middle section because I know I stand in the walkway um I stand to like stage right and that ultimately was a good decision because that's where all the, like the chill people were standing most of us were also people of color you know safety in numbers but throughout the concert as I guess is the norm for like punk rocky shows like this there were like full mosh pits in like the center area like very close to where I was standing but not involving me and like I get it it's sort of the vibe of a show like this but also we're still in a pandemic y'all really gonna be touching and pushing each other around especially when a lot of these white men are not wearing their mask no I'm not getting COVID from this no it just looked like it just didn't seem you know good or smart there was also a lot of crowd surfing and like the people on stage were really encouraging it and i'm like uh mm, having a lot of strangers touch you aren't aren't we over that i was just very mm. but also in the middle of the mayday parade set there were like this group of like seven or eight white people that just sort of like pushed right past me like straight to the front because they're trying to get to the front and like I don't care that you're trying to get to the front. I don't need to be at the front as I mentioned many times before. I don't care about that. And the fact that one of these white bitches like shoved her arm in my stomach to like push me back as she was making her way forward. If she hadn't moved through the crowd so quickly and she was even standing by me for a second longer, I would have broken her arm. Because what are you doing? Don't touch me and don't shove me in the stomach. I would have killed her because not all of them made it to the front. It was clear that like there was like a, a chain link of like seven or eight of them and only like four or five made it to the front and eventually they had to stop moving because there wasn't any room. And then the rest of like their line had to just sort of like shuffle back and be like, oh, well, we didn't make it. If she was one of those girls, I would have killed her. Keeping a lid on my anger issues is very difficult. <laughs> It only takes a very small thing to just just go off and I stop myself from choosing violence every day But one day someone's gonna someone's gonna make me choose it. I'm gonna I'm going to end their life <laughs> For legal reasons, this is a joke and hyperbole, but also don't fucking touch me um, regardless, that set was amazing. They played the full album top to bottom and this is what I want all of the bands to do I feel like too many of these emo pop punk bands that have been going on for like 10 plus years keep trying to put out new music. I get it if that's what you want to do, but also like touring is what makes you money. Just tour your old albums and then wait to put out a good album. Cough cough fallout boy. Do you know how badly I want a folia do anniversary tour? Or like, uh, take this to your grave anniversary. Any of their old albums I want, even Save Rock and Roll, I will take. I just want to hear those albums top to bottom. I think it would be so good and so fun. But I had a great time. They played uh, When You See My Friends. They played uh, Call Me Hopeless But Not Romantic. And they also closed the show with Jersey and Jamie All Over, which are two of my favorite songs from Lesson Than Romantic, so like, I didn't feel too bad about missing that tour because they played it on this one. It was amazing. Um, they played all my favorite songs. I had a great time. And they also gave stage presence. I feel like so many times these punk rock and emo bands want to give you nothing in terms of stage presence. Like, they had two openers for the show. They had Magnolia Park, who I love, and Real Friends, who I know nothing about. Um, I love Magnolia Park so much. They were amazing. I got to say hi to them at their merch stand after the show. I bought a bunch of their merch. They signed my shirt. It was such a great time because one, good music, but also we need to be supporting people of color in the punk rock scene because I've said it before. I've said it a million times. The most emo people should be people of color. What does Jake in Milwaukee have to complain about? His mom not giving him the keys to her minivan? Real people of color are struggling in the world. Why are we depressed? Because the world wants us dead. It's really so very simple. And Magnolia Park gives a great show. I missed like the first half of their set, unfortunately, because of traffic and the whole dinner fiasco that I mentioned, but I got to see them perform like their best songs because bands usually put like their biggest, most popular songs at the end of their set. So I got to catch like those songs and it was fun. Um, they were amazing. But then I had to stand there and I waited like 30 minutes to see real friends. I'm like, I don't care about them. 
Like, I get that almost all of these emo and punk rock bands are just a group full of white guys uh, singing music that sounds very similar, but Real Friends specifically just sounded like, they just, first of all, they looked so boring. And if you're a Real Friends stan, uh, good for you, I don't care. Um, they might be very, they might be very talented, but I have stopped giving my time and energy to white people, specifically white men. So if a group is all white men, I will not listen to their music, even if it's good. I don't care, cause there will be better music, or equally as good music made by people of color. Real Friends was just so played on stage. Like it, the their main guy was just this regular white man in like a white t-shirt with like a button up over it and in like black jeans. And I'm like, you look so boring. There was no pizzazz to their stage at all or to their looks at all. I was just so bored by their entire set. And like, I was so mad that like Magnolia Park went on first and that I missed some of their set and I didn't miss any of Real Friends. Like I get it because in theory, Real Friends is like more popular and you want to go in order, but like it just felt, especially during Black History Month, it felt a little racist, you know? But Mayday Parade had stage presence. They had like these stained glass windows. They had like these candles on stage. Everybody was in um, a suit. And it was like, they have a cohesive aesthetic and I really appreciate that. They looked so cool. I was on stage right, so I was on, um, what's his name, Alex? Alex aside, I don't know any of their names. Um, for the longest time, I called their, their front man, who's apparently named Derek. I've been calling him Jamie because of Jamie all over. Because he looks like a Jamie, doesn't he? Uh, his name is apparently Derek. I don't actually care about their names. I'm just there for the music. I don't need to, like, get it. I don't need to, like, know the members like that. But Alex was, he had like a little bow tie, he had suspenders, he had like a nice like uh, long-ish like sweat back hair and I was like, this man, this man was just so alluring. He also looked very uncomfortable and very insecure and I think that's what I really liked about him um, is that just like on stage he looked like if somebody just like asked him a question he would start crying. <laughs> and I don't know, I just prefer my men a little bit scared. <laughs> but I had a great time. That concert was so fun. The white people around me again, testing my patience. And on top of that, at the end of the show, you know, each of the members has like the set list taped to the floor um, in front of them so that they can remember what like songs are coming up. And there were five members, so there were five of them on stage. The one on stage right, closest to where I was standing. And again, this section of the, of the crowd had the most people of color. We were all just sort of clustered in this one section. And also the person at the barricade was a black person and a wheelchair user. So tell me why the staff who is taking down the set pulls up this like set list from the ground that's like right in front of our section and walks it to the other side of the crowd and hands it to some white person. All five of those like set lists went to white people in the crowd. Nothing went to our section of the crowd. That felt very racially motivated. I did not like that at all. Regardless of that, I got some merch. Let me show you the merch. When I went to the merch stand, I got this long sleeve. It's green, as you can see. It says, when you see my friends, tell them hi for me. You know, absolutely obsessed with that song. It's also this logo. I'm gonna be so honest, I cannot read this text at all. It's way too dark and way too blurry. Maybe if, can you all read that? Let me know if you can, because I cannot. Also has this really cute design of like a cliffside. It says Mayday Parade at the bottom of the ocean. There's a place for you and me. And it has all the tour dates um, on the side right here. And I just really love this green color. It's a beautiful green long sleeve. Um, I was going to get their red t-shirt because they also had a, like a beautiful like maroon red t-shirt. Um, but it didn't have the tour dates on it, or if it did, I really was misreading it. It looked like it just had like the the song titles from the album, and I was like, I want something to show that like I went to the tour. Um, I also got some merch from Magnolia Park. I also bought a CD at their at their table. I also bought a CD at the Mayday Parade table because I thought, oh, the CD that they're selling is their third self-titled album because that's what the tour is about. No, <laughs> it is their new album, and not that I dislike it. I've never, I I don't think I've really listened to their new album. 
I did I did buy it thinking it was a different album. So I was a little bit disappointed when I looked a little bit closer and I was like, oh no, this is this is a whole different album. I thought it was just a repackaged version, like an anniversary version of uh, their old album. But it wasn't. It's okay though. I also got this beautiful blue uh, tie-dye shirt from Magnolia Park. As you can see, there is signatures across the front of it. You can't really see it because most of the shirt is dark, but that is okay. Um, they all signed my shirt, which was cute and fun. I love Magnolia Park. They're incredibly fun and talented. But on top of that, you know how much I love early 2000s nostalgia. And one thing that I've always been searching for online are um, band shorts. Because that used to be a big thing in like 2010, where like a band would put out like a pair of like really like short running shorts and they'd have something on the back. And they were just like generally like derogatory and slutty. And I just think that we need to bring those back. So, when I saw that Magnolia Park was selling these cute little shorts, I had to buy them. There are no pockets, which is a little bit of a letdown, but it says Magnolia Park on the thing, and it has two little pumpkins on the back. So fucking cute. I knew I had to buy it. And yeah, I think that is all that has happened this month. It's been a lot, but it also has not been a lot. Um, we are really just hoping that things work out in March. Um, if things go well, I'm going to be out of town for three weeks. We shall see. But ultimately, things have been good. I'm focusing on the positives because if you just keep thinking good things will happen, then good things will happen. That's manifesting it. That's manifesting what I want. So I hope you all had a good month and I hope you have a good March, a good upcoming spring. We're heading into spring. Very exciting. Um, and if you are trying to get BTS tickets, I hope that Ticketmaster doesn't screw you over. And hopefully you, um, get tickets alongside me. Knock on wood! <laughs>